I just got into uh, another co-op and uh, I was the first pick. Nice. They ruined Rampage. I know. That rock. If it don't, if you don't use it, it sucks your mana, dude. It gives you a mana penalty. Yep. You don't get a cooldown penalty, but you get a mana penalty. Mmm, that's scary. And I think it's within four seconds. Five, five seconds. Still, I mean, what's the difference? Four seconds, five seconds. Still sucks. Okay, which one of y'all want to play in? Oh. You want to play so off on him and go to bed? The Q ability is where it's at. Boys, I'm gonna get off here. Later, guys. Good night. User disconnected from your channel.
enemy has been slain. User joined your channel. Sup, y'all? Yeah. Hey, not much. Just about to get off the phone. I'm just going to get off the phone. I'm just going to hop on and say hi. I've already got her up to level 5. Um, my thoughts are she's an interesting carry. She has a lot of unique dynamics and mechanics. I think she has a lot of the game. She's definitely not for um, I think that she has a phenomenal degree of power in her 100% cleave. She's like Serath and that she's a melee carry. E needs to be your primary ability that you upgrade. She is not viable jungle. She is dubiously viable offlane. It requires you to be very good at boxing. Um, she's definitely... Um, basically what happens is, so keep in mind I'm also playing with flats, so I have a different perspective on uh, the last couple of games have been, before the most recent two have been with platinum, basically five stacks, so things are a little bit different. Um, the biggest problem she has is she has no CC. As a result, what happens is, is her is killer, everybody gets out, you can't finish the kill. Um, when you go high, slow, you get the finish. Yeah, but the problem is, is if you only have, if Decker is your only CC, um, you're basically, you're not gonna do enough during team fights, um, cause you just, you just don't have enough CC, basically. And, so your jungler needs some kind of CC, and in that sense, yeah, Rampage is a good, um, Sevi's good because of his root, um, Grux is good because of his pull and his, uh, uh, quick jump, um, uh, the knockback ultimate, but his root is a valuable point. Uh, ba basically, she's a good here. Because ultimately, your jungler needs to be able to get out, do ganks either on right, mid, um, or if left is being a special pro. And if they can't fill that role, it's a problem. L late game. Oh, hell yes. It, it's not even a comparison, given... Well... Twin Blast, I would actually give, would be better than her. Um, but definitely better than Murdoch or uh, Sparrow or something like that. But ultimately, she's not designed for that role. Um, and I've tried playing her there, she just doesn't fit it. Oh really? my god, she's so good. Yeah, she's she's nice. I mean I I played her she's solid in respect. That attack speed when that's up, she's ridiculous. Oh yeah, she basically whips the crap out of people. It's 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 surprising to me. She is basically in my opinion right where she should be from the release. Serath was underpowered and there was really no disputing that. She is not. She is viable. Yeah. Aurora was still OP. I don't know if she's still now. She's not. Um. So, so basically they nerfed her in several key ways. Horfrost now has a, has a shorter root span. 
which is and a shorter duration. That's good. Um, I don't think they changed. I think they. Let me pull up the actual patch notes and read it off, because she did take a pretty big hit. So they reduced her basic attack oh scaling, God. which makes um, crit oh, builds much less viable. As well. Um. I think her hoarfrost has higher. Oh, the hoarfrost doesn't hold as long anymore either. Yeah, there's nothing in the spells that changed. The duration. Oh, sorry, inflation charge was increased. That's the only thing that was increased. But it was realistically negligible. I mean, it was two seconds, which isn't a particularly big deal. No. Um, but yeah, the basic attack was hit pretty hard. Um, but not too, too hard. She was made much squishier. Um, yeah. ultimately probably 200 health points or so. Um, her Horfrost, like you mentioned, was notably dropped. Her alt, um, is notably reduced in that the shatter damage has been reduced significantly. So, Although being in a wave of minions is really, really painful, it's not the end of the world at this point. Whereas before, it was very much the end of the world. I mean, basically, in my opinion, she was OP, and she got put to where she should be. She's a very good player, and her ult is very capable if used correctly, but still very effectively countered by purity sensor or even a shield ultimately. Oh, that was amazing! Uh, what you playing, man? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I was fortunate in that I was able to get get her up to level five pretty easy. I put was able to get her in enough games. PvP um, I'd have to check the stats. I don't remember. Uh, it was a mix of both. Um, all said and done, I played her in. Sick. Gore is slow to loot. Played her in three PvP matches. One I won, two I lost. Um, the so the win. Coiling Gale is this thing. Her ultimate. Um. There's actually a lot of things. Um, so there's there's a couple ways that you can play that ultimate. Um, one is you can use it as a projectile barrier. This can help isolate team fights. It's a pretty decent pretty decently used for that, and it can be or rather effective for that. Um, yes, that. Uh, I believe it's actually 250 when she maxes it out. Yeah, let me... Yeah, 250 slow max. So, basically, that is where the key value comes in. It's actually a pretty decent-sized AoE, and that's a strong of a really good isolation potential for that. Um, especially if you have other controls like a Sevi on the team, you can use that slow to very allow the Sevi to line up a perfect split, um, reposition the team, and lock someone down. Very useful overall. Um, not since it doesn't do damage, it's, it's a 40 it's second cooldown when max upgraded, and I think that's about right because basically it's it's a CC.
anything beyond using it as a CC is... Yeah. Oh, honestly, her right click should probably be the last ability you upgrade. Stick one point in it, one, maybe two points in it early game, but definitely E is first priority. Followed by Lash Kick, because Lash Kick makes it a useful ex uh, escape. Um, also, important combo, E and then Q. So what happens is E will extend your whip range, and then that will give you a longer jump from the Lash Kick jump. of the uh, the wind burn the e ability actually is does not change but the cooldown is what is really the star yeah basically yeah the cooldown is 8 seconds at the end with a 6 second duration which basically means you have 75% uptime on it because she it uses such ridiculous mana she has an incredible link here. Also, word of advice, you probably have already noticed this, but um, the cleave only goes up to the target that you're hitting, so you want to aim for targets in the back and smack through. Also, Thunder Cleaver does work on her, which is the same as that, but with a 50% down. But I don't recommend using Thunder Cleaver on her. early, early game, but realistically, Thund Thunder Cleaver has it much more dubious use, um, unless you're, unless, unless you're totally clear, you really shouldn't bother with Thunder Cleaver. I actually, no, I'm talking in general, strategically, um, the lane clear for a if you've already got the lane clear for basically two lanes, i.e. if you're running a Yin or a Countess or a Countess and a uh, Bellica or something like that, um, you don't need the lane clear. The Bellica once they get up, Bellica and Countess once they get up to the card power can clear lane so fast that you're better off having the single target damage that will allow you to better influence team fights than you are running Thunder Cleaver. With some situational variance depending on a couple scenarios. But primarily that's... For Yin. Yeah, it, it definitely depends on affinity. So, um... Are we talking Yin? Uh, no. Yeah, I would not do that. Flesh Fire Piston is too too limiting, and it's because it's only attack speed, you wouldn't want to use that. Um, you don't want to use that because you, you're basically saying, I'm equipping X amount of attack speed. You want to use Red Eye Nitro um, for the for uh, crit attack speed combo, or you want to use, I think it's Whirling Wand for attack speed damage. Right, right. That way you can build in. It, that way you're, that way you're following the optimization graph for DPS more evenly than you are with just going straight attack speed, because it makes your, it, it messes with the op optimization of the DPS graphs. I mean, ultimately, it doesn't make a huge difference. Um, but it's enough that it's, it also gives you more flexibility to optimize your deck for just a little bit more attack speed or a little more crit or damage or less attack speed, so you can tweak it more easily without totally rebuilding your deck. Eight or nine. 
you doing co-op versus me? Okay. So yeah. Um. Yeah. As having played PvP, um, co-op versus AI is not accurately representative of what you're going to be experiencing with her in PvP. Um, not even close, because what happens is, uh, one, she's actually harder to last hit with, and I'm not sh quite sure why. Uh, yeah. It should. Yeah, it's it's not easy, and I'm not. Basically, it's hard to do. Ultimately, even as carry, you're still dealing with a more complex situation where you're quite possibly not going to be leading in card power, and basically. What you're seeing at 5, 6, when you're at about 10 card power and the AI is about that same, that's going to be more reflective of the feel that you're going to be getting from uh, in PvP, where you're dealing with targets that don't miss, and you're dealing with a fairly close uh, card power, and it comes down to how well you can execute your kit as opposed to how well the enemy can execute their kit. Oh yes, um, one of the recent matches we uh, played, um, the Countess was a huge problem for her because she doesn't have an escape. Um, or at least a good escape with kick. Which requires it made. Or minions, yeah. Um, because you can use it on minions. But ultimately, the Countess was on both sides, because both sides had a yin and a Countess. And the Countess was consistently the main of the yin because you were able to get behind smack, get behind the smack. Um, and that, that happened both ways. Um, She's also very susceptible to control because she's not If you look at her, she's got like 1300 health. Even even Serath at high level has almost 600. And uh, I forget what Aurora has, but it's not. Yeah, even Aurora with the new patch has 1500. So she is inordinately squishy. Um. So she takes a lot of flack. Uh, also, make sure you have lifesteal on her. That 100% cleave gives her high, high sustain yeah. because of how much raw damage you're outputting. I would say that people who's really good aim will love her. She's definitely strong. From what I'm hearing through the grapevine, not only is she strong, but with the buffs that Serath had, she's also pretty strong. Um, Serath's improved armor makes her a beast once you start getting up towards level 15 because basically she's running 53 base armor which is basically 9 more than any other character so basically it's almost like having a freaking armor plate on her in addition to the base stuff and with her attacks yes um, and she was notably buffed on attack speed she, no, she's. They buffed her innate armor. So the reason, the reason why um, different heroes, you don't do as much damage to heroes as you do to minions, is because of the innate armor. 
um, Serath now has the highest innate armor of any character in the game by basically nine points, oh, which than, is uh, more than Greystone. Um, yeah, yeah, great. He, she has actually much, much more than Greystone, but Greystone's passive gives him a very strong degree of armor. Right, of additional armor. Yeah, the, the, this. Basically, the uh, the stoic, the passive, basic armor, even at max level, uh, Seraph would still have almost uh, 46, 47. She would still have nine more armor than him, which is basically uh, his level two stoic ability. Which, I mean, makes her pretty solid, and with her ability, giving her the flexibility to uh, be immune for one to three seconds, depending on how many targets she's got, it's pretty powerful. Oh, get her master. Yeah, I bought her mastery the instant I saw her come out. Did y'all get uh, the diamond crates? What'd y'all think of that? 23 crates? Nice. Yeah. I got 19, I think it was, so I can't complain too much. Oh, ultimately, very solid. I'm probably gonna go on the forums and say, nice, nice job, guys. Very impressed. Yep. Enemy inhibitor is under siege. So they give you like they they basically gave you all the stuff that you were supposed to get except for the silver chest, just for the diamond chest. So I didn't get any silver. Oh nice. That's always nice. And one of your gold chests you get a freaking diamond chest. Diamond chest, yeah. What do you get in one of your Uh typically coins. you get coin and reputation. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, you had me lost there. Enemy inhibitor is under siege. Also, though, I freaking. I love Yin's challenge. Beautiful, beautiful skin. But I, meaning, I like the color scheme. Yeah, I find I don't like a lot of mastery skins. Just because they're so, like, they put a target on your back. Me personally. That thermal bond seems pretty good. Damn, they can stack? That's insane. When you get stuck. Yeah, um, so. If you run basically straight up health on someone like Rampage, and you run that card, basically, um, you run the multiple cards for uh, the new stuff on healing, on stuns, and on damage, and cleansing, and whatever, you're basically adding like 500 damage a second, or 500 health a second under some circumstances, just because of how ridiculously powerful it is. They're, the card changes they made, I am very, very impressed with. I would direction. use that with Greystone. That'd be sick. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, it wouldn't be so good with uh, if you were going straight damage, but it would still be quite potent. I um, think it. I think it would be. That's the only time you're weak is when because you can't life steal while you're freaking stunned. Yeah, so then you can just come back at it and whoop ass. Yeah, the only the only thing is is you have to have enough health to make that that viable, and he's only got like two two thousand health, so. That's really only like uh, say only two thousand. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, if you look at two thousand, um, really, that's only two hundred and forty health. So basically, if you get stunned, that's only sixty health a second. I mean, that's nice. But when that's all you need with Gray, he already has uh, defense. Yep. Yeah. But that's also eight card points, so you're sacrificing a whole lot to get some. And it has yeah. ability armor on it, so. Yep. And the hundred health. Yeah, I mean, well, ultimately you pay. You pay six card points for that passive. It's not bad. Um, Stinger Boost is now actually a, an interesting option. And Ash of the Witch on um, Shinbi. Oh, beautiful combo. And, um, if you're oh, that's the one that they added, uh, the one that they updated, that shit, that shit's yeah. Uh, OP. Yeah, the... Um, I would get that, if I, if I could, I would get that with the uh, twin. Ash of the Witch? Oh, that's ability hit. Uh, yeah. Um, and... Ooh, Grim with that one. Shit! If you're running with a team, quenching as a support, quenching skills at this point is basically... Uh, a necessity. Quenching scales is a 225 health heal and a 21 basic armor for 20 seconds. Basically, you open up with that midway through a battle and boom. That's that's a super card. Shit. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it, it heals everybody for 225 in one shot. Yes. And then it grants 21 basic armor for 20 seconds. That's sick. Yeah, not only that, but when you think about it, you're getting 0.3 mana gen regen, you're getting 50 health, and you're getting a re mana regen aura of 0.6 to yourself and allies. So when you think about it, you're getting 4 or 5 card points. Yeah, that's out of, out of that card. I'm gonna have to get that one added to all my, yeah. I mean, that's that's almost worth running if you're not running a dedicated support on freaking carry, because that's a pretty big deal. Enemy has been slain. But, but yeah, it's a very solid card. Perhaps actually okay. I think they, uh, that I is think they misestimate. That's, that's uh, basically what's it called? What's that one point card that you used to uh, hit yourself with in one shot? Bump juice. bump juice. It's like a super bump juice. Yeah, pricey super bump juice, and you can only use it once every twenty seconds, and it costs mana. So if you think about it, it only costs you two points. Uh, it costs you one point. Hey, if you had the, the, uh, that's right, get the passive. Yeah, yes. that's fucking, that's great. Uh-huh. That said, it, it still has a recharge time of 80 seconds, and it does cost mana, and you can only use it once every 20 seconds in a team, but, yeah, still. It's pretty potent. I 
Hey man, bro, I have to get off here in a second. I gotta work tomorrow. Um, these guys might can play with you though. Yeah. I guess. Late, man. I also have to bounce. It's getting late, and I don't have work tomorrow. But I do have other stuff I need to take care of. I'll see you around. Enjoy the new heroes and the new patch. I'm liking the balance. Also, by the way, Beefy, um, for Greystone, you may want to strongly consider Bounty Stock at this point. Yes, they massively buffed that, basically. Yeah, basically it's now instead of stacking 3%, it's stacking 6%. Yes. It is. But if you think about that in two hits, that's... Whatever it is, that's a th that's three card points, and it's not like it's without value in and of its own merit. It, it's just something to keep in mind because it's they buffed it enough that it's viable for certain certain builds. What other characters would you think? Pretty much anybody with the fast attack speed. Yeah, um, I would run it probably on, I would strongly consider running it on Chimera. Um, probably Twin Blast for the DPS. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not sure I'd run it in Twin Blast. I'd want to test, um, because I'm not sure his right click would stack it. If his right click stacked it, um, counts as a, uh, it may yeah. reset it. Yeah, I doubt it would reset it because it's a time sensitive. Uh, but yeah, it's still still ridiculously powerful. Uh, that said, because of its stacking nature and what you're going to end up with CC's late game, um, it is more of an early mid-game card, but still possibly useful. Uh, and they improved blink shot, so that's much more sensible. Oh, by reducing its cooldown? Uh, no, they uh, changed it to be from mana to power. So it's no longer granting you mana regen, it's granting you power.